You're on. Okay. The Bible says that Jesus loves you. Uh, that Jesus loves you. <laughs> he says, Behold, this is Malachi 4 5. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, this is a prophecy that has partially happened and has partially has not happened because it says here, it, it talks about two different times of the Lord's return. It says the great and dreadful day. The dreadful day hasn't come. Dreadful day, listen, for those of you who think that this prophecy has been fulfilled, the dreadful day of the Lord has not happened. The dreadful day of the Lord is going to be when all the Christians are taken off and all of a sudden everybody realizes they have missed the rapture and they realize the tribulation is coming. There is no greater reality of tribulation being uh, for sure than there is that of missing the rapture of the church. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. That's what he was referring to. He was referring to the Sabbath day, of course, which is the millennial reign of Christ. The winter is the hard part of tribulation. And there's it's not just a rapture of the church, but there's going to be uh, billions of people die. A rough estimate of people, the amount of people left on the earth is going to be 500 million. Uh, once you filter through all of the things that's happened, that's going to happen in the last days and tribulations, including the, the wars and the, and the rapture of the church and the diseases and the pouring out of the veils and all that kind of stuff. And the total, the total amount of people that will be left will be about 500 million. And the Bible tells us that it will be seven women to every man in that day. Okay, so, and keeping that in mind, I want to talk to you about turning the heart of the children, just what it says here, turning the heart of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. And, and, and don't forget that last part. It says, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Smite the earth, not Jerusalem, not Israel only. The Lord says, smite the earth with a curse. The entire planet. Revelations is about the entire planet. Listen, if uh, the, there's three asteroids recorded in the Bible uh, for the last days, Revelations chapter 7, 8, and 9, and if just one of those hit the earth anywhere, I don't care where it hits, it's going to devastate this entire planet. It's so much that the Bible says that the earth will be moved from its path. Now, for those of you who know about um, the path of the earth and the, that it does have a path, and the earthquakes, that the one that hit in Haiti, it shook the earth so hard that it, the, her, the whole earth shook when that happened. And it moved the earth off its axis. It moved it. Just a, just an earthquake here on the planet. Not anything coming in from the outside. And the Bible says that these three asteroids, when they hit the earth, will move it off its axis. The winter, spring, summer, and fall, the Bible says, will never stop. But, but uh, you know, unless the Lord comes and stops it, he said, there shall no flesh be left on the earth. Okay, and that's, that's pretty much the scene that I'm... Uh, giving to here um, unless unless the hearts of the fathers are turned to the children and the children to the father now listen the prophet Elijah now Elijah himself is not coming back Jesus himself said John the Baptist was this prophet 
foretold about this it's the spirit when the Lord gives prophecy it's it's spiritual um, the Lord can bring back a prophet inside of his spirit inside of another person okay and these these prophets that God trains these prophets you know, they don't need a school they don't need to be they don't even need to talk correctly look at Moses that was his excuse Lord I can't speak very well God says Moses you're going if I have to tie you gag you and you know I mean I mean this was God, this was God's attitude Moses you're going I don't care who made your mouth you know I mean I would have loved to have been there and heard that whole argument between those two you know Moses trying to talk God out of it no listen God trains his prophets God trains his prophets. he don't need secular school to help him train his prophets he's God and this prophet will be well equipped he will be well equipped he took Moses and put him into the center of the metropolis of that day Moses was well trained then he took him out of that and he put him in a place where he could be in touch with the people that he was supposed to deliver God done that on purpose he he orchestrated that he did it on purpose so that so that Moses would be equipped to do the job that God had had sent him down here for from the day he was born the devil tried to wipe him out listen I can tell you for a fact the day that I from the day I was born the devil was trying to wipe me out you know I was the devil had planned for me to be one of the first abortions ever taking place in America but guess what when I came out I was kicking and alive <laughs> You know, back in 1954, it was for a medical purpose, but still, you know. And, you know, the doctor might have been thinking, well, this woman got too many kids already anyway. I don't know what to do. But they thought I was dead. The doctor told her I was dead. But when I came out, I was breathing, okay. And the doctor didn't want to go to jail, so guess what? Here I am. I must have screamed or something when he took me out. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, whoa, put me back. <laughs> I took a good look around. Anyway, uh, I saw the doctor's ugly face. I don't know what happened, but here I, God preserved me, okay? And the Lord just like that. The Lord has taken me through a lot of things. Yeah, I'm the prophet of the Lord. Am I this prophet? I don't. God hasn't told me no such thing. And I am not going to say that I am unless God tells me. The only thing God has told me is about the prophet that I am he says that I am I am his white eagle prophet and I am not to refer to myself as a prophet but I am the Lord's prophet that's what he told me and um, and, and anyways okay I'm getting off track here a little bit but I, I just want you to know that where I'm standing where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about here and and that God has trained me to know these things that I'm telling you God has trained me to know these things. Okay? Yes, I listen to other men's opinion, and I go back and I look at the Bible, and I see if this is right according to what God has said. And I'm going to tell you something now. Most of the time, I bet you over 50% of the time, I find that what preachers talk about, most of them have no idea what they're talking about. Over 50% meaning most. The, the dreadful day of the Lord has not happened yet. Okay? The dreadful day of the Lord has not happened. It's coming. It's coming. God has trained me to know the hearts of men. I was raised a Democrat, and when Ronald Reagan came into office, I turned to Republican um, with the heart of the of the godly people. And I, I don't even think I'm Republican now, man. I'm leaning more toward... Uh, the Tea Party, and God wants me to, to train me of what they're about because He wants me to know the heart of all the people in this land because God is going to use me to help turn the heart of the people. I know that. I feel it deep within my soul. I feel that God is going to use me for that purpose. Okay? And and this is what, you know, the Bible says, and I, I went to a church one time, and I preached a sermon, and I said, I said, listen, I said, God has said this about this church, and this is what the Lord wants to happen here. 
And the people and the pastor totally ignored me. The pastor was totally against me. Totally against me. Because some of his friends didn't like me, so he didn't like me either. He didn't like the fact that I was saying that God sent me here and do this and do that. And um, and so they, they didn't do it. So I, I preached another sermon and I told him, I said, there's always a, uh, a result. There's always a punishment of what you do. The actions that you do causes God to do the things that he does. When you don't do what God has said to do, there's a punishment coming. Just like here. We have a choice now. Turn your heart toward God or there's a punishment coming. Just like you've got your children. God owns us just like we have, have. We think we own our children. You know? And and God has sent plenty of mercy to this earth. It's not like he's forcing anything. But God has sent mercy here. And everything God is doing is right because he is our father. God is the father of this world. The devil might be the prince, but God still owns this place. Even even the devil, and he is eventually going to do with the devil whatsoever he pleases. Okay, so the, the turning of the hearts. It's finding who God is. Listen, you need to dig into that Bible. You need to start looking for God instead of mad spells against him. You need to start looking for God instead of having mad spells against him for everything going wrong in your life. Listen, God protects his investments. The Bible says he chastises those that he loves. Therefore, he protects his investments through the chastisement. He, God does things. And, and when, when turmoil comes into your life, just like a good child would run to its mom or its dad, and a bad child will stub up and run off into the woods somewhere. When and yes, I have been guilty of that. <laughs> but there's been plenty of times where I did run to my parents when I hurt, you know. And most of the time, man, I run to God when I hurt. Every time I run to the Lord when I hurt. And God protects his investments in me. Because, you know, even growing up, I have learned that if I run to God for my hurt, things come out better things come out better and the Lord takes care of my hurt a lot of times man God has taught me my parents didn't teach me but God taught me to run to him when I hurt you know there, there is a place you know if you don't feel love if you don't feel love coming from a certain direction you will never know that that's a place to run when you hurt and that's what God wants us to do I, you know I want the Lord to to make me about love I want him to make me about about helping a nation to heal Boy, this nation is being torn apart today. This nation has been literally ripped apart by the ideals of our government, by the ideals of uh, the ungodly side of our government, and even even into the uh, the side of our government that's supposed to be godly and is not. Some of those are just as bad as the as the liberal side. And both of them are hollering they're Christian, you know, and 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 probably neither one of them are. Uh, but there's definitely more Christians on the conservative side. I know that, especially in the Tea Party. The, P the Tea Party, to me, seems to be totally made up of, of sold-out Christian people. This is one thing that scares the liberals to death, is that those are, I mean, they bring every bad thing. It's like watching a movie of the, of the uh, Antichrist back in the 1970s. That's how the... Uh, uh, the liberal media is portraying the Tea Party, and they're and most of them are 100% sold-out Christians. Okay, and and is the answer for this country today? Trump is not really the answer. He's just he's just bringing up a lot of obvious statements that need to be said. But the Tea Party really is the answer for this country today. And, and and turning the heart of America, you know, if if they were elected men, um, they would be Christian oriented. They would turn the hearts of the people back to the country. But uh, this prophet Elijah that is coming in the spirit of Elijah is going to do this somewhere along the line. He's going to have the words, those words of truth, and be able to speak into the heart of America that this is what we need lest the Lord would come and smite the earth with a curse. Amen.
All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining. We'll see you again next time. Another great message right here on Crossing the Middle Ministry.